Chris, the Idaho Painter, follow along as we go around the Chevron gas station and paint all these guard posts and the curbing around the gas station and we'll give you some simple tips while we're doing this process. We're out at the gas station here and we're actually painting all the posts on the gas station and we're using an all surface enamel that's an oil based enamel going around these got to be highly durable and they need to be high gloss and they're the actual chevron color so we're using a product protective and marine coatings from sherwin williams industrial enamel high gloss and we're just going around hand brushing these things and the slow drying product so it gels out really nice got to make sure you have some paper on the ground in case you get any drips. It's not a water-based product, so it doesn't clean up really easy. So we're just using a masker with one inch tape and masking around it. And then we're just hand brushing all these posts at this gas station. We're showing you that process right now. And these posts were painted with this product before and being a really nasty oil-based product, you don't have to do any sanding or priming. This, uh, the coating going right over the top of the previous high gloss coating is gonna bond and stick very well. Another handy tip is using rubber gloves. I hate getting this stuff on my hand because it's hard to get off. You gotta use paint thinner to clean it off. I don't wanna get those chemicals on my hands, so I use rubber gloves too. Pro Industrial Enamel from Sherwin Williams. So we're just using you know, wet paint signs that we get free from Sherwin Williams, putting them down, notifying people that the paint is wet because this is gonna take quite a while for it to dry. So came up with a pretty simple handy trick and I just took some cardboard shields, cut around the, a circle out of the cardboard shield. That way we don't have to sit here and mask around each one of these posts. We could just set our cardboard shields down, paint around it, and then move them to the next spot. Nice nifty trick. Once again, when you're actually painting these things, don't use any tools that you want to uh, attempt to clean afterwards because it's just not worth it. So get a brush, a roller cage, a roller and a bucket that you can just throw away. The bucket, you can actually let it set out and dry for a couple days and then reuse it, but the rest of the stuff, I won't even worry about it, I would throw away. The rollers that we use are only a couple dollars. The brush is just an old throwaway um, uh, duster brush. There are exterior brushes that we use that we just convert to duster brushes. And the nap is an old nap that we're using. And so that way uh, you don't have to just worry about cleaning it out. It's just not worth it, it's just a big mess too. So when you're dealing with posts like this, they're gonna take a lot of abuse and some banging of you know cars and equipment and stuff like that. And so you wanna have something on here extremely durable and nothing water-based is really gonna be durable enough. That's why we're using an oil-based product. As much as I don't like oil-based products, that's what we gotta use here in this application. And it's an oil-based industrial enamel. Don't forget, when you get a chance, go check out my website, theidahopainter.com. On there, you'll find my tool store where you can buy all my tools and accessories, and you can buy my t-shirts and hats on my Cafe Press store. Go check it out when you got a chance, theidahopainter.com. Just want to give a special thanks and a shout out to two of my supporters, Jeff Bellin and Paul Stakowitz, I believe is how you say it. They're two of my supporters on Patreon and financial supporters. Thank you very much for supporting the Idaho Painter. Williams will dry and we have our dog passing through right here interrupting us. Don't mind the dog. The dog's name is Sarah. Um, so the glare.